Hey all, welcome back to SLB Basement Bourbon Bar. I am Kurt Ludington, your resident host and bartender. As you can see, we don't have our normal setup that we usually do for uh, mixing a cocktail together. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to do a whiskey reviews. Now, more than any other question that I ever have, whether it be on our Facebook page, SLB Basement Bourbon Bar, or our Instagram page, SLB Drinks, or even on YouTube, SLB Drinks. By far, uh, the most popular question I get is, what particular whiskeys, bourbons, rye, scotch, do you prefer? And that's that's hard for me because I, I kind of take it personal to, to the extent that I, I'm really not an expert in the field of uh, whiskey tastings and reviews. I'm, I'm really not. I'm pretty much a novice. I'm kind of like everybody else that enjoys a good pour and has some whiskey bottles and enjoy different types of, of whiskeys. But in order to try to fulfill uh, a majority of the questions and, and, and uh, requests that I get, I want to try to get through this. And we're going to have a good time regardless. So what I want to do, <clears throat> excuse me, not that long ago, several months ago, there was something that came up on Reddit. And it, it basically broke down um, uh, what they did was they, the, if they only had five bourbons or five whiskeys that they could choose, what would they be? And here's how they, they broke it down into categories. They broke it down into a daily drinker, a cheap mixer, what would you choose for a Friday night pour, what would you choose to impress a guest, and then lastly, what whiskey would you prefer to be a special occasion type whiskey, something you only open every so often because it's a special occasion type of a whiskey. Now, that came up on Reddit and a bunch of uh, YouTube uh, whiskey review shows that I watch personally to learn about different whiskeys. They just they just tore it up and they went through this a couple months ago. But I'm going to use that same platform, that same that that same breakdown, and I, because I thought it 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 would it would um, encircle a lot of different types of uh, whiskeys, whether it be by price or or whatever. So well, that's what we're going to do. And I'm all set and ready to go here. A uh, couple of caveats, though. <clears throat> again, once again, I am not a professional. So I can only give you my personal reviews. And secondly, I can only, I can only suggest bottles that I have either tasted or have. Now, granted, we probably have three or 400 whiskeys down here. I don't even know. I, have, I don't have an accurate count. So I've tasted a lot of whiskey. But, you know, I'm sure there's some people that'll say uh, the certain whiskey here. Well, I think this one's better. But, you know, if I haven't tasted it, I really, I truly don't know. So before we get started, though, if you would, please hit that subscribe button. Once you've done that, hit that notification bell. And that way you won't miss a single episode of the show. Please list your comments below. I know we'll have uh, plenty of difference of opinions. And I think that's great because that's the way we learn. Okay. Today we're dealing with bourbons and whiskeys. We're going to split this up into two shows. Uh, I mean, sorry, bourbons and rice. The next show is going to be specifically Scotch whiskey. But today we got bourbons and rice. So the very first category is a daily drinker. So it, I have to be completely honest because I, I just it's just not me not to be honest. So my daily drinker is without question wild turkey rare breed without question that's my daily drinker uh, if, as you see this one hasn't even been opened yet i've already emptied the other bottle last week that i had i just got this one a few days ago now the only real issue i had internally about picking the rare breed is this bottle is going to cost you 40 bucks maybe 42 43 dollars <clears throat> excuse me if if you pick a daily drinker one would think that you would try to pick something that's more around the $25 range, and that's completely understandable. There's so many options, 
good options in that in that lower range. You got some Maker's Mark, Maker's Mark 101, a Wild Turkey. I'm sorry, Maker's Mark, uh, yeah, Maker's Mark 101, Wild Turkey 101. You've got some Knob Creek in there and some of their uh, less expensive bottles that are excellent. But in order for me to be truthful with you, my preferred pour, more than not, is going to be Wild Turkey Rare Breed. This bottle offers a little bit of proof. Uh, it offers some great vanillas and burnt toast and just some just some real quintessential bourbon flavors that you'll find in this in this wild turkey rare breed. Now, I will tell you this. 99% of the time when I have a pour of this rare breed, it's over a block of ice. Now, you'll have a lot of professionals, you'll have a lot of people that tell you there's only one way to drink whiskey and that's neat. Well, that's just that's just ridiculous. The best way to drink whiskey is the way you like to drink it. And that's the end of that story. There's some whiskeys down here that I, I prefer to drink neat. There's other whiskeys that I have down here that I prefer to pour over a block of ice. This particular rare breed is my preferred pour and I always pour it over a block of ice. All right, moving on to the next category. The next category is a cheap mixer. Now, I, I came across this bottle only a several months ago, but I fell in love with it for mixing bourbon cocktails. It's Old Granddad 114. I can't speak highly enough for it. It's gonna cost you a little over 20 bucks, maybe 25 bucks, depending on where you're at. But this bottle is fantastic for mixing bourbon cocktails. I mean, you got your you, know, you got your your basic bourbon flavors in there. You got a little tobacco, leather, some vanilla. There's some good stuff in there. But what I love about it is the proof point. The proof point is 114. So there's a lot of different uh, bourbon cocktails that your bourbon is going to get washed out because of the ingredients. Case in point, not too long ago we put a ship, we put a uh, a YouTube out there, a video that we made. Of several different bourbon cocktails and one of them was the blood and bourbon. In that particular uh, cocktail you have one ounce of blood orange juice and you have one ounce of lime juice and you have some rich simple syrup and the list goes on and on. So once I pour in my ounce and a half, I believe that cocktail had an ounce and a half of bourbon. Once I pour an ounce and a half of bourbon, let's say of Angel's Envy or something like that that's only 80 proof, what do you have? Your bourbon is completely washed out. Now with this old granddad 114, that bourbon is still the star of the show, which I love when I'm mixing up a bourbon cocktail as I want my bourbon to shine through and that's what you get with this old granddad, 114. All right, moving on to the next category is a Friday night pour. I, I, I could not, I could not, and I could not get past this list without including at least one bottle of Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. For, uh, these I think are $65 now I did hear that they might be going up a little bit but I, I promise you this even if they go up to $75 that is a fantastic buy for this for this line Elijah Craig barrel proof they come out with with uh, three releases yearly what I have here has been my absolute favorite so far of all of them that I have and it's uh, the C919. Now they letter and number all their releases. Uh, this was actually a 2019 release, and honey, sorry for this, but I bought three bottles of this when it came out because it was so good. So, so, I did not know that, folks. So this, is, so this is actually the second or third bottle I don't even know. But the C919, uh, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, man, I, I, it's just got all the amazing brown sugar, caramel, vanilla flavors that that everybody searches out in a bourbon. And that's what you'll find with this Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Another good pick, I believe it was the two, 2020 release, is the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof uh, B520. That one also is fantastic. But still, to this point, my favorite is the Elijah Craig Barrel proof C919. So on a Friday night when you get home and your work's done, you just want two minutes to relax. Yeah, this has got a little bit, 
It's got a little bit of a kick to it because it's barrel proof. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to use my cheater sometimes on some of this, but uh, this is 136.8 proof. And believe it or not, I know this is going to sound crazy because I just told you I always have my wild turkey rare breed over ice. Seven out of ten times I drink this neat. It's on a Friday night. It's when you want to chill out. It's a little bit, but it doesn't drink that hot. It doesn't drink extremely hot. You know you have some proof on your hands. Don't get me wrong, but it doesn't drink extremely hot. And it's just so satisfying. And it's just freaking delightful. So that is my Friday night pour. Moving on to the next category. Impress your guests. Now, if I had guests down here, this was a no-brainer for me. The rest of these, I, I kind of, I, I wish he washed around. This took me several weeks, several weeks, believe it or not, to combine these bottles. Could kept changing my mind. This one was a no-brainer from from the, from the very beginning. I had this chosen, and this is a Bardstown release. Uh, my boy Trenton picked this up for me because he knew I was looking for it. This is Discover Series number four. This has only been in the bar again, probably. I don't know, a few months, but my, I mean, it, it's just unbelievable. And what I like about, about Bardstown, once again, I, I cannot, I cannot recommend this Bardstown uh, bottle specifically, uh, this Discovery Series number four anymore. I mean, it's a fantastic bottle and all of the Bardstown releases are, are exceptional. Okay, moving on to the last category. The last category is a special occasion bottle. Obviously one you probably paid a couple dollars for and something that is super, super good and you don't want to just sit there every week and have a pour and, and be done with the bottle in a month or two. So this was extremely, extremely difficult for me, but I finally concluded, believe it or not, on an Irish whiskey selection. What I have here is red breast 27 year old you can't go wrong with any of the red breast uh, releases uh, any of the red breast bottles are very very good uh, irish whiskeys um, this particular bottle uh, is a single pot still irish whiskey and they have some writing here and even if my cheaters on them and have a hard time reading it but I want to try to read it for you, but, but basically this bottle is an explosion of fruit flavors. I mean, it's just an amazing whiskey. It's 54% ABV. Uh, it basically says uh, a seamless medley of dark fruit, blood orange, and walnuts, summer berries, soft vanilla, and smoldering oak. I've got to be truthful. I really don't get much oak out of this bottle. If it is, it's very little. But however, this bottle is truly amazing when it comes to fruit type flavors. There's a little bit of earthiness to it, so like it said on the label, maybe some of the walnuts and so forth, but uh, the berry explosion that's in this bottle will just, will just it's, it's just dumbfounding. I have never gotten that with any other uh, bourbon, rye, Irish whiskey. I've never gotten these type of flavors and that strong of berry notes in any other whiskey than this Redbreast 27 year old. Now, this, this, it's probably also because it's finished in uh, port wine barrels. So, you know that port wine is going to lend a lot to you, to your uh, to your berry flavors. Now, as you can see, any whiskey that's 27 year old is going to cost you a couple dollars. This one's going to cost you a few C notes. Uh, I think it was uh, maybe you close yours real quick, but I think it was actually five C notes for that bottle. So <laughs> I think she fell off the chair, but she's going to be okay. She's going to be fine. However, I've already had this bottle probably. You know year and a half or two and it's basically a third gone so as you can see i'm going to milk that out as long as i can this is a special occasion bottle this is something i'm only going to open every so often and even you know a lot of times you know a pour consists of probably two ounces when i pour something like this it's probably going to be one ounce and i'm going to really really sip it lightly and, and, and enjoy it 
as much as I can and I'm going to try to lengthen that as long as I can. So Red Breast 27 year old is my special occasion whiskey bottle. So in review very quickly my daily drinker without question wild turkey rare breed. My absolute favorite cheap mixer is this old granddad 114. My Friday night pour has got to be this Elijah Craig Barrel Proof and my specific favorite release is the 2019 C919. Now to impress my guest the Discovery Series number four from Bardstown is immaculate and I would highly suggest most all of the Bardstown releases. And finally the special occasion bottle again the Red Breast 27 year old Irish whiskey. Man, I had a fabulous time putting this together. It's kind of like one of my passions. Again, I know I'm not a professional, but I love dealing with bourbons and rye and whiskeys and scotch. So I hope we all learned something here together today. And thank you so much for joining us. I had a complete blast doing this. So as always though, we're gonna ask you to please drink responsibly. And then we'll see you next time right down here with me for part two, don't miss it, part two of our whiskey review scotch bottles using the same format. Take care and we'll see ya.